Welcome to another connection here on TKO8 Television. Dennis King, thanks for joining us on the show this week. We appreciate you coming in and watching our show every Monday as we have different organizations from around our broadcast area come in to tell what they're doing. And there's a lot of great organizations out there. Many times you or myself, we may not know exactly how they interact with each other. Many of them are intertwined, so to speak, with programs for children, for adults, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, housing problems, whatever it may be. Uh, we're certainly glad you've joined us this week. Stay with us, be back in a moment. We're gonna talk with two individuals about a project that's very important to the community. Gifts, gifts, and more gifts. That's what you'll find at Sisters Flower and Gift Shop. Come in and browse their vast assortment of unique Christmas ornaments, wreaths, and wall decor. For the holidays, Sisters has added a new line of baby products, including clothes, footwear, and accessories. If you like sweets, pick up some of their gourmet candy, cookies, or snacks. Whether you're looking for a bold centerpiece, an artistic floral arrangement, serving pieces, or all-occasion tabletop items, Sisters has something for everyone. Sisters Flower and Gift Shop. We are so much more than flowers. Many things have changed over the years, and so has Auto Body Repair. Even though Ozark Auto Body has been in business for over 30 years, they continue to change with the times. They believe protecting the environment is important and have done so by using environmentally friendly waterborne paint from PPG. This aligns with the technology used by original manufacturers and gives you a lifetime limited warranty. Quality PPG waterborne paint, ASC certified personnel, plus 24-hour towing service. Ozark Auto Body and Harrison, always taking pride in excellence. Back on Connection here on TKO8 Television, our first two guests today, uh, actually Shirley Smothers. Yes. Uh, Shirley, you're, you're actually school-based. Right. Uh, I'm a, I'm the, I work for the Harrison School District, and I'm the homeless liaison for the district. Okay. Yeah. And then Bill Knipe, if I get that right. Correct. Uh, Bill is actually fairly new uh, with the uh, House of Hope, which most people know, located down across from Edwards Grocery, uh, and been there for a few years, and Bill's got involved in it, and fairly new at it. And between the two of these individuals, they are going after a program that's going to be kind of a transitional um, housing program, I guess we'd say, for women and children. Is that true, Shirley? Yes. Why don't you yeah. kind of touch on, give us a little bit of background on this. Thing. Oh, I guess about a year and a half ago, there was a group of us, we, we were concerned about our homeless population here in Harrison, because I work with a lot of homeless children and families. Right. Um, we decided that we wanted to try to create some type of transitional housing or shelter facility. Uh, a lot of times we have to send our families out of town for shelter services because we don't have a local sh shelter. So we kept meeting and meeting and discussing it and we finally developed a plan. And we've been working on this, like I said, for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we've decided that we, we are going to try to establish in a transitional housing facility here at the old St. John's daycare facility here in Harrison mm -hmm. and we've been working with the Episcopal Church on this and we have a business plan we've we have received approval on that um, we are working underneath the House of Hope they have a 5013C mm -hmm. so we're, we don't want to form that right now and it's going to be um, the administrative part of it will be facilitated through the House of Hope. Okay. And this unit, these units will house eight families with children. And it'll wow. be women and children for three months at a time. And um, we are planning on having churches, individual churches, sponsor each one of the cottages. And that sp sponsorship will include um, financial responsibility as well as, you know, ministry and you know other services that they can right. offer uh, we'll be working in we'll be partnering partnering with other agencies here in town and using their services as well and our goal is to be able to get the families back on their feet you know into a stable environment ha help them find a job resources and everything that they need so they will no longer be homeless and I think I have to always say this about this project is everyone thinks that we're trying to bring homeless to Harrison and you know we have already homeless yeah. in Harrison. Mm -hmm. I ha did my count this morning, and I have 105, 
45 children, and I started school, I think, with 128. So wow, and that's that's just in Harrison mm -hmm. because yeah, that's well, in the Harrison school district. Yes, <laughs> that's not yeah. within yeah. the county. Uh, at last count, it was over 275. Wow, and I think it's important to also note that that is only school age children. Mm -hmm. That doesn't count preschool because there is no count for that. Right. So, I do. I do do. I do count my preschoolers in my count. I don't know if the other. Uh, Districts do. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, when you say, Shirley, you say they're <coughs> homeless, does that mean that they're living in an automobile or, or, or transitional with some other family? Or don't, I mean, how, how do you, how do you a justify that? A more, majority of my families live doubled up, which means okay. they'll live with other people for economic right. re reasons, meaning, <coughs> excuse me, they don't have a place that they can okay. live. Okay. Um, they also live in hotels, motels, um, cars, in front yeah, of Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Along just, the creek bank anywhere. in the woods. Yeah. In tents. Uh, you know, we've, we've done some um, uh, <coughs> interviews on this show with the uh, uh, Harrison Housing Authority, right. which, which deals with a lot of those kind of people. And actually, Bill and I were talking prior to you getting here about how a lot of these agencies, uh, like House of Hope, even like you being with the school district, are so intertwined because you got DHS and you know you've got right. a lot of different organizations that get involved depending on the particulars of that family or child or woman or whoever it may be, even men, you know, from sexual abuse right. to whatever. Uh, the plan for this is to try to. Uh, how, how will you fund it? Will the church actually fund this, or you'd have grant money coming in to help fund this to kick this thing off, or where's your funding? other than churches, where's it going to come from? Well, right, right now our, our goal is, and we have a fundraising committee, okay. is to um, initially reach out to maybe some of the uh, larger private um, companies that will help uh, support a grant. Okay. Uh, we really are trying to stay away from uh, a federal grant. We really want to keep it kind of in-house, in the community, to, to help fund this. Okay. Um, the church's involvement... Um, while it would be, you know, it would be if, it'd be great if a, if a church could just write a check for everything, right. but we know that's not realistic. But the involvement of the churches would be is is uh, after it's done, after it's up and running, where a church would, as Shirley mentioned, they would almost like sponsor. They would sponsor a cottage, okay. and so as a uh, mother and children go into that cottage, they would be there to help uh, help that family. Um, you know, certainly provide spiritual guidance if if they will accept it. If they if they if they won't, then then that's okay. We'll still love them and take care of them. Uh, in in any form, if they need transportation to DHS um, or to the DMV or Social Security, wherever they need to go, uh, we will help them do that. Um, and um, and the security in the system will be very tight, so that um, every family that's in there will be. Will feel safe and secure, and that's that is our probably our number one goal is to make sure that the families are protected. Okay. So to the point where they will actually have a key card, and um, which will be through the House of Hope. They will be screened. There will be background checks. Okay. Um, and then um, with that, then what we're asking the churches to do is that if you if you're going to sponsor a a cottage, that we ask for um, their help financially. By um, by don't by by paying five hundred dollars a month, and that will help support the cottage, the maintenance, the security, um, the utilities, things like that. Um, and then so that would that would take care of all those kind of maintenance costs, so okay, that so we wouldn't yet still have to go out to the community even more and ask for more money. We, you know we really don't want to do that. Um, and the fact that this is. Um, this really is a faith-based effort. Okay. Uh, from that standpoint, I'm, I'm assuming, are you, are you talking about these families, will they be able to uh, have meals in these cottages? I mean, will they be able to be self-sustaining without bringing in? Well, the, the, the House of Hope already feeds the uh, homeless right. for breakfast and lunch. So would they have lunch. to go there? They will, they will okay. probably be transported there because, of course, that's where everything sure. is. However, okay. um, the... Part of Hope Cottages is there is a kitchen, okay. and so the churches um, will be allowed to use that kitchen, so um, to help feed at night if if they, if they want to do that. You know, perhaps uh, 
you know, perhaps the church will say, you know what, on next Thursday night, they're going to feed everybody there. Okay. Um, and, of course, we're hoping that, you know, all the churches who are in there will work together. And so they yeah. may, so, they'll, so that they'll help. Right. Um, if, if uh, you know, there's, and there's going to be times where that won't be happening. And so each cottage will have a small refrigerator and a microwave okay. so that they could be able to, uh, you know, warm up food. Uh, within the and we also have a free feeding program from children after school, 18 and under, right there at the Harrison Junior High. Right. So they can come over there from 3.10 to 4 o'clock and get a free meal, and they also get a snack. So they get something to take back with them as well. So there are several ways that they can eat. And in mm -hmm. the rooms, they'll also have their loud microwave and certain things that they can, if they just want to heat up a can of soup or something. But I'm not thinking that we're going to have any trouble feeding these mm -hmm. families. Well, I'm good. feeling really yeah. good about yeah. that. Speaking of feeding, uh, and I think this is probably through your program, do you still do the backpack program? Yes, I do. Okay. I think I am filling 170 a week. Now that's that, that's just a for the week. weekend. Is that for the weekend? For the weekend, yes. Wow. Yeah, 170. It's the most I've ever had. I just the most I've ever had to fill before. Wow, so that's a lot. It's a lot. But it, so in other words, the school uh, the, the schools, I'll say there's uh, other schools have it, but uh, let's use Harrison as an example. They feed the children that are on this program at the at the uh, cafeteria, junior high cafeteria during the week. And then the backpack mm -hmm. program is for the weekend to make right. sure that they have sustainable right. yeah. meals during the week. Yeah. Mm. Uh, website. Do you guys have a website that you're using for any of this stuff? Uh, are you using House of Hope? or How, do you, how are you going to get this information out other than us trying to get it out mm -hmm. to, to the public? What's your plan as far as letting people know when you're going to try to start this and so forth? Uh, Hopefully I remember right. It's Hope Cottages Harrison. Dot org okay is the website hope um, cottages harrison okay and uh we also uh on that website we'll have links to uh some information one of them is a video uh, okay. which um w we're actually pretty excited about we that are. the east lab <laughs> uh, at the junior high is the one who put together put this video because again we, wanted to, we wanted to keep yeah. things local and uh, what better way than this? And um, let the kids get involved. Let the kids yeah. get involved, and so they uh, they put together this video, and so you can uh, see that link. And okay. um, and it's a real informative type video. Yeah. So if you're kind of curious, kind of about what we're trying to do, you can go to that vi watch that video, and mm -hmm. it'll answer a lot of your questions mm -hmm. as well. So do you have a time frame right now? Or I know oh. you've had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we feel like the, we're building Rome here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, six months, we're, a year. Yes. What do you kind of see? You know, I think 2018, I think, is yeah. really realistically, um, realistically yeah. is when it'd be up and running. Okay. Um, as far as the um, as far as the churches are involved uh, are concerned regarding the adoption of a cottage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is we aren't asking churches to say, okay, let's let's come up with some money right now. We're simply right. asking them to sign a letter of intent saying, well, once you get it done then we will sponsor Cottage. Because yeah. uh, when it comes to grants, they, I, I think you a lot of the grants, they, they want mm -hmm. to know that once it's done, that you, it will sustain itself. That you've be got commitments in. on the other side. Exactly. Sure. Sure. exactly. And we'd love to talk to the churches about signing that, and that's on. That's probably so, a good thing. So yeah. I'm sure you'll if make presentations. If contact to some with of us, churches. we will come out and do a presentation. If, if somebody had a question, yes. who would they contact the House of Ho I mean, like somebody wanted to call and ask questions, who would they contact? Charlie, they can contact me at my at my office at five seven seven five six three five, or they can also contact the House of Hope, and Bill will tell you that. Yes, and that's uh, seven zero four eight zero seven seven. Okay. Well, it sounds like a very exciting program, and I know it's one of those kind of programs that you don't build it overnight. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of manpower, a lot of money uh, to get the thing going. We have a lot of work invested in the plans, oh, the planning part, and have involved a lot of different agencies that's and great. people in town and, and people at different, that have different skills. So it's we That's good. Get a lot of people involved. I, yes. I, I think as far as the labor side, because yeah. when, you, when you look at a... Uh, the size of this project right. it's huge uh, <laughs> it's huge and half of it would be labor right. yeah. and but we already have uh, that part of several people are just willing to say hey we mm -hmm. yep. maybe they don't have the money but they have right. the labor they okay. can donate yeah. labor so, well, we've run out of time I do appreciate so. both of you coming in it sounds like a great project for the community and I'm um, sure you'll have a lot of people involved we want to talk to you some more as we get along okay, great. down mm -hmm. the road uh, Shirley Smothers Bill Knipe talking about a program for women and children kind of a transition 
transitional housing program. If you'd like to know more about it, contact Shirley or get a hold of Bill down at the House of Hope. Thanks for joining us on the first half of the show. We'll be back in a moment with the second half of Connect. <laughs> Christmas season is the time of year to remember family and friends. At Shelby's, we know the importance of choosing just the right gift for that special someone. We've created a winter wonderland for your holiday shopping experience. Whether you are looking for home decor, gourmet foods, kitchen gadgets, or baby products, Shelby's can help you find that perfect gift. Stop in today and browse our broad assortment of holiday gifts and decorations. Shelby's will make your holiday shopping easy and enjoyable. Shelby's, simply elegant, surprisingly affordable. Sam Alexander Pharmacy has expanded and is now offering many additional products and services. Their new pharmaceutical compounding area allows them to create products to fit the unique needs of a customer. They also have added Spinco orthotic shoes and sandals, Dr. Comfort diabetic shoes, baby gifts by Aiden and Anias, and toys by Melissa and Doug. Stop in today and let them help you with any of your specialty pharmaceutical needs. Sam Alexander Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy in Harrison. Back on Connection here on TKO8 Television for the second half of our Connection show today. We have Mary Hickman with us from the Ozark Humane Society. Mary, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Dennis. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Uh, I know that you're very busy. Uh, You've been involved, before we start off with some uh, things here, uh, with the Ozark Humane Society for several years, I know. Yes, many years. Many years. You're president uh, of the... Currently. uh, Currently. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion, months and months of discussion, as a matter of fact, by the uh, Harrison City Council. Uh, about a uh, dog license and I guess finally uh, it came to fruition and we do have so why don't you tell a little bit about kind of what's going on there a lot of people may not know okay well it's actually a whole animal welfare ordinance so there's many other things covered in the ordinance other than just dog licensing running at large um, nuisance dogs that won't quit barking Um, All aggressive dogs, all that kind of stuff is covered in the ordinance, as well as if you're in the city limits, your dog needs to have a dog license. Okay. And I know uh, that uh, the city has worked with you and obviously needs to work with you uh, with animal control out there because they they pick up dogs sometimes. And I guess they've actually, they no longer have the pound, do they? They do, but only as a very temporary temporary holding. Okay. What happens now, um, pardon me for interrupting, if if animal control picks up your dog, um, what they do is Rick, Rick will put it in the paper. Uh, the Harrison Daily Times has been very good to uh, work with the city of Harrison. Mm-hmm. So he will make every effort to try to get your dog back to your house. So if you have a license on your dog that will be cross-referenced in a database, that's going to make that just that much easier. Wow. I w- and I would think that would be a big asset to uh, dog owners out there because, you know, most people, these pets are like children, you know. You lose them, you just get frantic with Absolutely. it. And sometimes it's hard to find them. Uh, so that's a that's a real plus. Uh, how will the program be administered? Or how will people get their licenses? Okay, well, this is going into effect in January. Okay. So you can pick up your, lo- uh, your dog tag at your local veterinarian. So every veterinarian in our area, um, including Western Grove, um, Dr. Beverly Chauvet, boy, that's an easy name to say. Uh, I call her Dr. Beverly. Everybody's participating. So no matter who your veterinarian is, when you go in to get your rabies shot, or if you already have your rabies shot, you can just have proof of that and pick up your tag. If your dog or cat is, well, it's just dogs. Um, if your dog is altered, it's $10. And if your dog is unaltered, it's $20. If you have a service dog, you're not going to have to have a tag. But if it gets picked up by the animal control, you will have to produce your certificate that it is a service dog. If you're a senior citizen, you can um, get a lifetime tag, which will be a different color. So you'll only have to pay the 10 or $20 once, and then you're good to go for the lifetime of that dog. Oh, that's a nice benefit for the seniors which yes. are on limited income most of them um the uh if, if also i i think if i remember right if 
they don't go to the vet, they can also, can they come to the shelter or your thrift store and get a license? They certainly can. They can come to Cause for Paws, which is on East Crandall by mm-hmm. Liquidation Outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, we're open six days a week from 9 to 530, or you can go out to our shelter on Rock Springs Road. We're open every day except Sunday and Wednesday. You do have to have uh, proof from a veterinarian of your um, current rabies tag to get a license, however. Okay. So you need to make sure you take that with you. Yes. When you go get it. Um, we're gonna, we've got a, your fundraiser we want to talk about at the end. But let's just talk a little bit about I know there's been some uh, indications that you'd like to build a new shelter and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about kind of you what bet. some of the long-range plans are there? You bet. Uh, we formed a building committee several months ago of business leaders in the area. And we have been meeting twice a month uh, to try to decide what's the best avenue to go forward uh, in building a new shelter in visiting with other counties and and we've been working on this new shelter initiative for years and years and visited many other areas to see how they do it and and there's many different ways to approach it so right now we have several different options that we're looking at what we decide now is going to determine the future of our shelter and our organization for I mean, many, many years to come. So it's better to be prudent, slow down, look at our options, and decide what the best avenue is to go forward. But we will be going forward in the new year, uh, not with a specific location at this point, but uh, with a a game plan. Uh, If if I recall, actually, you've taken it to the first step. Don't you have a a layout, proposed kind of layout uh, that you've done so far? We sure do. David Evans, who is one of our building committee members and a draftsman, has drawn um, a wonderful um, facility that is based on the Conway facility, and um, we like that facility a lot. It's no frills, but highly functional, easy to clean, easy to maintain. Um, We are also very enamored with Washington County's facility, which is a very expensive facility, but it's uh, definitely state-of-the-art, and we like their business plan as well. So, um, like, we have a drawing. We kind of know what we want to build. Like I say, just more to come this following year. Well, that's good. So. I'm sure you'd be you'd be happy to have a new facility. You've had that one for many many years. I know you've upgraded yeah. as best you could. Absolutely. Uh, at the old shelter, but um, now does the old shelter uh, kind of bring me up to speed on this? The old shelter is it is it county? The county owns that, or who, it's the Humane Society owns. Yes, it? the Ozark Humane Society is a five hundred one c three, and we own the property and the shelter. It was built in the 70s. Mm-hmm. The land was donated and then uh, the organization built the outside kennels, but a lot of it's just converted house, converted garage. Um, you know, we're on a dilapidated septic. It's just out war itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. How many, uh, Mary, how many animals just on a average or given time uh, would you ha- have at the shelter? And I guess I should say dogs and cats because you do take both. Is that correct? Correct. You know, Dennis, that's one of the, the hard lessons we learned when we went to becoming a no-kill facility um, probably at least eight years ago is you have to control your numbers. At one point, we got to having 250 dogs out there. So 100 dogs is our cutoff limit, Um we had a lot of outside pens constructed at that time, which is a big no-no with the EPA. So we really had to transport a lot of dogs out, get our numbers under control, uh, so we can maintain in business and also, um, you know, help service the community and, and help the disenfranchised animals that have nowhere else to go. I mean, they have nowhere else to go. So you would have the maximum uh, of dogs or dogs and cats? Uh, we try to keep it to 100 uh, dogs and 65 cats. Okay, still, which is a lot of, lots a lot of animals. Yes, it is. You know, there. but our adoption rate, Dennis, is really very good. Our shelter staff out there, um, they are wonderful. We adopt on the average about 45 animals a month. It, but, you know, we get, we adopt 45 and get 46 in. So yeah. it's a constant. It is an absolute constant. And we do contract with the city. So any dog they can't find the owner of, we take for $75 you know, ahead. And that's one of the reasons on this licensing um, initiative, it's not a new concept. I mean, 
a lot of people are like, well, why do I have to have a license for my dog? Well, the same reason you have to have a license to drive your car, because that pays for roads. And, you know, it's just the way it works. It's not a new idea. That's how cities do it. And if we had a city that had an animal welfare facility, then that revenue would go directly to them. But since we don't have that here in Harrison, we're kind of filling in um, that that role and uh, for the behalf of the animals. It's all for yeah. just the sake of the animals and yeah. trying to keep us open and keep it going down the road. Well, I was really pleased to see you uh, several, I think you said maybe eight years ago, when they went to a no-kill facility because I um, didn't like that part of it. And uh, so I was glad to see that you've made it work using. Well, and if I, I might just add, because traveling to these other counties and seeing what they're doing, mm -hmm. and this is uplifting, no matter who owns the facility, city, county, uh, uh, 501c3 organization, people just aren't into killing unwanted yeah. animals anymore. So yeah. that's uplifting. That's, I mean, that mindset good. has changed. Yeah, that's a very good thing. Well, we're, I don't want to run out of time here. Let's talk about your angel tree program. All right. Out. And you've got a picture here. I do. Hold that up in front of the camera. This is Andy. Okay. And uh, what happens, we're about um, six years into this fundraiser. We do it every December. Uh, we have four locations that have angel trees. You can go to Nature's Wonders. You can go for our Cause for Paws thrift shop. You can go to Hudson's Groceries. And you can go to Joe Melton um, Harrison Animal Clinic. And uh, we go out to the shelter and take pictures of every animal we have out there, all the dogs and all the cats, so they're current. So if you see an animal on this angel tree and you think, I want to go adopt that animal, you can. But if you can't do that... You can just take the picture and mm -hmm. put it on your Christmas tree and sponsor that animal. There's an envelope attached that has our address. You can mail us in any amount of a donation we accept. And uh, you can put the, the, the angel on your tree. Or what is also a nice thing to do is if you have somebody on your list that's hard to buy for, you can put this in your Christmas card to them and say, I sponsored this animal at the Humane and Society yeah, for you for Christmas. Nice, nice. That's, it's a, that sounds like a, I know they do a lot of different Christmas tree programs for children and, and so forth. But uh, th this is nice because, again, you, you actually see the animals and you pick the one. You know, everybody has their own choices. Yeah. And, uh, so is it going good? I mean, are you just getting it going, I'm sure. But I'm sure you're getting a lot of people taking. Yes. In fact, right before I came here, I had to go uh, reload the tree at Hudson's. That's always a very good um, location for us. And um yeah, it, it does real well. It's a it's an excellent fundraiser, and like you say, it's a great way for the people to see our beautiful animals that we have out at the shelter. Yeah, not not everyone can obviously adopt an animal but for numerous reasons. May have already too many animals, uh, but <clears throat> this is a great way to help the Ozark Humane Society. Even if you can't adopt the animal, is to put some money in there, whatever amount that's that's affordable for you. It all goes to a great cause, stays right here, and goes to the Humane Society. That's that's a good part about it. So yes, sir. Uh, the uh, uh, program now, will you just keep the the, the uh, tree angel trees up until Christmas, or till you get give them all out, or well, they stay up till New Year's. Okay. Because what we've discovered is a lot of children and whatnot get a little cash for Christmas. And so after Christmas is always a very good um, end push for the angel trees. So we leave them up till the first of the year. That's good. That's good. That's a good idea, actually. A lot of people can help out. Well, Mary, you've done a great job with the Ozark Humane Society. I know it's a, it's a tiring <clears throat> situation, and, and all the volunteers that, that are a part of the Ozark Humane Society uh, Board of Directors and just volunteers, uh, they work basically with volunteers. Calls for Paws Thrift Store on Crandall Street. If you want to help out in that way, any donations, certainly appreciate it. All that money goes right back into the Ozark Humane Society. And don't forget about the Angel Tree Program, uh, as they have it up at Hudson's Supermarket, Nature's Wonders, Dr. Joe Melton Veterinary Clinic, and... Calls for Paws. Calls for Paws. So you can go to any one of those locations, pick off a couple of those nice animals there, uh, and it'll make you feel good for the holidays. Mary, thank you so much for coming in today. Good luck with the Angel Tree thank Program, you. and good luck in the future with finding at some point in time the funds and the place to put a new shelter in. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on Connection today. We hope we brought some information to you perhaps you didn't know about. Join us every week as we have different organizations and people from those organizations come in to talk about what's going on in our viewing area on Connection.